Hello, and welcome to Well Behaved Women podcast about, or new podcast, excuse me, about old ladies. Yes. I love that tagline. Do you? I really do. I made it up just like as I was kind of fucking yeah. with the initial thing. I think I was it's like, funny because hey, you don't know like whether or not we're talking about old ladies or like old, old ladies. Yeah, exactly. Ladies of old. Yeah, ladies or of ladies old. of old. Old, old ladies, ladies or ladies, or ladies of, old. of old. A new podcast a about ladies of old. Old ladies or ladies of old. Both. Well, that's what I'm saying. Porque no los dos. Well, Porque no los dos. Factions for each. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you, Ortega Taco Shells. I'm pretty sure they're the ones who did that. Porque no los dos. I think so. I mean, it's blended to culture regardless. Yeah, true. responsible. True. Shout out. It's just Spanish. It's just <laughs> Spanish. Yeah. It's yeah, literally, literally just Spanish. All, like All the gringos out here just trying to speak some kind of Spanish. Thanks for that <laughs> we one. We got phrase. most of it from a commercial. We also learned Yo Quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> That guy is awesome. I know. Uh, have you ever watched Reno 911? Of course. That's, he's in that. He's one of the cops. Oh, shit. Wait, which one is he? Uh, he's, I, I can never remember the... Is it the guy with the sunglasses all the time? Yeah, and the mustache. He's yeah. Hispanic. Yeah, like, what's his salt name? Salt and pepper hair. Uh, it's no. been so long since I watched I know, I literally, there's a whole ta- uh, TikTok page. The only uh, name I ever remember is Dangle. I can of never course. remember any of their other names. Lieutenant Dangle. Yeah, well, that's... But I know, I know he does the... And there's Terry. I think his I think his first name's Armando something, the actor. I'll look. I listened okay. to the podcast not that long ago. He's Reno nine one one segment. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Tangents abound. Tangents abound. It's not the end. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Anyway, <laughs> do we want to talk about a specific badass woman? <laughs> oh yeah, that's kind of what this podcast is I'm about. I'm pretty sure that's what we were supposed to be talking not- about. <laughs> Education and entertainment. Yes. <laughs> Edutainment. 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 Clip All it. right. Another one. <laughs> we are not the first people. Another one. Edu- <laughs> <laughs> we are not the first people to use that. No, of course. No, I'm just more stickers. More stickers. All right. Badass women in Cute. history. Yeah. Previously on Desperate Concubines of the Forbidden City. Dun, dun. <laughs> Sorry. I love it. It's just a long order. It's not I had to be quiet. I need to be quiet so we can use that. <laughs> so for you, Gary. <laughs> okay. All right. So previously, we've got sixth level concubine who moves up to second place when she has the emperor's. <laughs> Uh, only surviving son. Bitch number two. When, Underdog story. <laughs> when her, yes, <laughs> bitch number two. When the husband and emperor dies, uh, he leaves bitch number one and bitch number two kind of in charge along with eight regents. Peace. She, bitch number yeah. two, ousts them and basically puts her and her buddy, bitch number one and bitch number two, in charge. And then uh, they raise the little emperor who cannot stand learning. He rebels against his mom. He's got a lot of anger issues because he doesn't. He knows he's going to be emperor there's a lot of pressure, yeah. but he also really doesn't want to learn. Yeah, he's the little emperor who could, but shouldn't. <laughs> didn't want to. Or didn't who want to. had to, but didn't want to. He wanted to be in uh, brothels. He wanted to be, you know, fucking his like people. He's like the little dickhead from uh, the Game of Thrones spin-off. Joffrey? Oh, we, spin-off. We are literally talking about, like, Game and, of Thrones world here. Oh, who is it? It's uh, House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. It's the blonde it's, lady's it's, son. Yeah, a- 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 no. Aegon? Aegon. Yeah, he's Aegon. a fucking asshole. Yeah, Aegon the second. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't want to be in charge of shit, is an idiot for real. Yeah, all he wants to do is fuck around. Yeah. All, yes. And, and jerk off out yeah. of windows. Yeah. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> yeah, that's that, part that of the. That did happen. It, it was Ugh. really jarring for all of us, too. It's a fucked up. I mean, okay, they made they made it. They made that whole show so much more sexual than it needed to be. Like, if you read the mm-hmm. books, oh, no, they made yeah. it so much more no, sexual. Yes, yes, sounds, yes, baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. That li- Daenerys literally was all about it's, having sex um, with Drogo the first time, and in the show. Office. Yeah, and in the show, they it was this violent it. rape where exactly. Jason Momoa is literally apologizing to Emily, going, oh, "I know." I'm sorry. He was like, "This is this is how it should be. I'm sorry. I'm gonna make this as safe as possible." Yeah, and I love you, Jason Momoa. Thank you. Ugh. Anyway, okay, so the little... I'm not gonna lie. I read all the books before I watched the show, and I watched the show because of Jason Momoa. Yeah, I like, I, 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 I and then it's only him. season one. Yeah, well, you know, only the good die young. <laughs> all right. So he's married, he's got his own little, you know, wife and mistresses and all his harem and stuff, but mm-hmm. he doesn't actually want to be emperor, he just kind of has been put in this position. Yeah, he wants the perks, he doesn't want the job. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, who wouldn't? All right, so for the first time, 
So she retires. She's like, all right. Like Tom he's... Brady retired? <laughs> yes. That's so, the way I heard it. The yeah. first time. Yeah, the yeah. first time. <laughs> so let's, so we're going to move over into CN for just a moment. All right. So bitch CN is one. the bitch number one. Got it. Right. So she's the first Empress Dowager. That's what their name is, is well, Empress the Dowager. Wife. The quarterback. The actual <laughs> wife. But when, well, when, uh, when Zhen Feng died, he named them both Empress Dowager. Uh, so it's Empress Dowagers of like the West and the East because uh, they lived in different areas. It's like, and stuff. Y'all figure it out. Mm-hmm. Well, they they got along really well and they worked well together. But while Zishi, how was... lucky for him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. This was after his death. So... Still. <laughs> Still. Yeah. Hey, guess what? We don't have to fuck him anymore. Yeah. Woo! Team up. Woo. <laughs> And look how much they got done. Oh, yeah. Um, so while Zushi was dealing with a lot of the political stuff and kind of the war stuff and the government stuff, Sian was still making sure that all of these relationships were um, intact. You know, now that I think about it, maybe they poisoned him. What? You think? I all right, think present so. your case. Uh, yeah. Present I'm, evidence. I'm just saying, like, maybe they already knew he was on his way out and they kind of sped the process up along to get him out of the way a little bit sooner. I'm not saying that they like, you know, plotted the how, whole big do thing. Do we know well, how old you, he was? I mean, so all those, uh, the regents, the eight regents that were there before, those were his counselors before he died. So mm-hmm. do you think they poisoned him or do you think the wives poisoned him? I think him? it's a team effort. But they were all against each yeah, other the, at the end. They the had to kind of Listen, got if we're it. talking Game of Thrones here, <laughs> we got fake alliances. I left think we need to have a little, little bit of journalistic integrity when we're talking about real people, though. I just want to be fanatical. Well, for he a has a point, okay. though. Chaos is a ladder. And at that point, when an emperor <laughs> dies, I mean, who's the little finger here? I'm just saying. That's fair. Who had the most to gain? And I know you see. Yeah, okay. They start fucking swinging axes at these regents. As <laughs> Except as for the gone. regents would probably see this as their greatest chance to grasp her for power over yes. two women. Yes. Yeah, of course. So that's, that's maybe the castles poisoned it. I think poison could be there. We don't know. Okay. Anyway. I'm just saying. All right. Interesting. We'll get into poison, but young. this is not oh. one that I've learned. We get but into again, like I said, <laughs> there's multiple versions of every one of these stories and it really um, depends on who's telling the yeah, story. It's folklore. Okay. It's, it's amazing how one story can be so influential in one way and mm-hmm. another story can really lean towards that person's perspective being the well, one, yeah. the hero of the story. Yeah. So there really bias. is a lot of differentiation between like stories here. So we really don't know hmm. the full scope of all this. All right. Facts. Okay. They finally let Tongzhe be the emperor. Like he's he's like four years overdue, but now he's got his <laughs> wives, he's got his harems. He's. Can you imagine being held back four years in school. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dunce. Oh, oh my gosh. god. God damn. Where's the hat? Well, so, okay, as that's happening, you also have Zushi kind of looking at this relationship between um, Tongja and. What's her name? I'm sorry. Sian? No. Uh, the Jishuan. Ah! G- Jiashun Empress. So Jiashun Empress is his wife. Got it. Wife. Oh, the his boys. bitch yeah. number one. Ah, yes. New right. bitch number New one. New bitch one number one. The one, one who came a. through the front door yeah. and not the side Just door. Throwing shade. She's the Marjorie Terrell <laughs> oh, of right. of this whole thing. So and also if Natalie Dormer. Oh it. my god, oh my she god. was my first like female <laughs> girl crush <laughs> all the all way. All the way. Everything she does, that little smirk she has. <sighs> I love you, Natalie Dormer. You'll never hear. I really this like Hozier, but... so one of my favorite videos is the music video where she's in it and she's like, you just love her as a redhead. Imagining, oh, yeah. kind of her life with everyone as she, that she passes by. Yeah, I have Very not fun. seen this, and I'm going to. Oh, it's good. Okay. She gives real like uh, Fiona from Trek vibes. Very really. Much. I mean, I think. Oh, cool. <laughs> I like. Yeah, it. she's pretty cool. Yeah, she is. I got a crush on her when she was in uh, Hunger Games, The mm. Tudors. I don't. I really didn't watch the Tudors for a long time. I, I definitely it's saw not it a, after. It's based on true facts, and it's very generally embellished. based on what happens, but mm. it is embellished with all the sex. But <laughs> Natalie Dormer is Anne Boleyn, so it's, she gets a lot of screen time for the first like two seasons. Gotcha. And she's phenomenal as Anne Boleyn. She really plays the femme fatale angle very well. Cool. Anyway, yeah. 
Anyway, so um, she's head bitch number one through the yeah. front door. Jashun Empress. The new generation. Yeah. Yes. So they, she kind of starts monopolizing a little bit of his time. And oh, yeah. a lot of his time. More time than Zushi thinks should be monopolized by one wife. Uh-huh. You know, he should be spending time with all of these other people, but he's not. He's either spending time with his wife or he's spending time at the brothels fucking around. Yeah. Um, he just really doesn't care about he's being... He's pussy whipped. Yeah. So he, she sends Joshua oh, and Empress away. Whipped. I thought he was gay. Yeah. Isn't that... Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's, he's I forgot dick about whipped. the... Dick whipped. He's dick whipped. <laughs> The visual effect of Hannah <laughs> slapping a dick. No, I saw it. I fully... I, <laughs> it was more like a karate I'm sorry, track. I'm trying to talk to the listeners here. They just oh. missed the whole effect. <laughs> sorry, guys. You weren't here. Someday we'll have video. Just try to imagine it, and it's just as awesome as you thought. We should, um, <laughs> we should try to do that at some point. Sticker. <laughs> <laughs> He's dick whipped. Dick whipped. Ha. Huh. All right. So... Zushi sends Jashun away, and she sends Tongzhe to this kind of remote little castle area. All right. And Item. instead of that, like, instead of just staying there and kind of keeping things as like they are, he's climbing over the walls oh and escaping god. with the eunuchs so that they can go party. Oh um, my god! And also, again, how funny is it that the the little emperor is running off to go fuck with a bunch of dickless guys? I wow. <laughs> We irony. don't know if they're fucking. We just know they're partying. But partying, no, they fucking. Oh, they fucking. Oh, they fucking. And it's just so funny. Like, are I'm... they wanting to fucking though? Yes. Okay, yeah, good. It's like a, it's a part. It's a it's, it's a party. It's very much a um. If we're if we're, yeah. It's a Tyrion Lannister getting dick down with a like, bunch of dickless dudes. All right. Yeah. Okay. If, if you want to be kind of specific about it, let's but he has let's to be... escape to party. Like <laughs> yeah, because Zushi like you like know she, you walking around. Zushi is looking at him like. You need to be in charge. You need to be more responsible. You are monopolizing your time with this woman, and she's obviously kind of turning a blind eye to the rest of the stuff, but she yeah. just sees him not around. Yeah. So she's, she's like, like, look, you have a responsibility. You've got to do this. And he's like, I, oh, yeah? I'm going to climb this wall. Right. With my Ken dolls. But whatever it was, and yes. all of this being what it is, he's finally given the title in 1873 of actual emperor. Uh, uh So he's put in control of the nation. It's official now. Yeah. It's official. It's officially a problem. It's yeah. officially a problem, right. So he takes his first opportunity to issue a decree stating that China was going to rebuild the Summer Palace. Oh, no. The that's, Summer Palace! Because that's what China wants right now. <laughs> or so I can buttfuck anyone I want there. <laughs> no, no, no. It had been destroyed during his childhood, and he wanted to basically give his mother's a place to retire. He wanted oh. that to be where they could oh. go and spend. No, no, maybe no. If she, this is if, where they can live. Maybe because if she then relaxes. they can get away from me. Exactly. I can get them out if from I can my... get them their I can own... fuck in the big house. Yeah! <laughs> and I can get them a spa of their own and they'll let me just be myself. But probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck in the big house. That's another one. I'm not a lady, but I'll take it. Oh my god. I mean, yeah, that that's pretty much the subtext there. <laughs> this was such a different conversation yeah. than I had with Paul. <laughs> He's so professional. He's very professional. Like, I heard it. I would say some of these things and like it's the way that I write a script, so it's a little more sarcastic than mm. what he, you know, is what he does. And so we <laughs> Yeah. It was a clash between very strictly educational and edutainment. <laughs> And it or was it was nice, but, he's but in this situation, nobody <laughs> said got dick down. There's <laughs> no dick with No butt fuck here. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> not in this, not in this environment. Dick down dynasty. <laughs> You're reading <laughs> the triple T. Snorting in my friend fine laugh every once in a while. Cavity. <laughs> That's oh, Shut up, Mark Norman. You got the giggles. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay. 
And bravo, that was good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <sighs> And I then swear, then. there's one line every episode that just tickles <laughs> me to death. And it was Dick Down Dynasty this, this week. <laughs> Buff walking in the big house. Yeah. <laughs> is it the alliteration? It's it a must be. Alliteration is I think a so, classic because it's technique. Very, Not it's to very mention clever. the comedy K. Yeah. Apparently the K sound is just extra funny. Oh. It's a hard sound. Mm-hmm. Catches your ears. Makes sense. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All, right. All right. Where were we? We were talking about the Summer Palace being ah, rebuilt. Yes. He wants so it's supposed to be a um, retirement, retirement home. home for the moms so he can butt fuck in the big house. That's mm-hmm. right. Um, and basically just getting them out off of his back. So there's, but there's a mistake. But mistake. 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 There is very little money in the treasury oh. to rebuild a fucking palace. Well, this is not the time, my friend. Right. So Tongja asked the board of finance literally to just find the funds scrounge for the money oh my god this is okay we got to remember that this is a a nation reeling from the like after effects of Uh multiple wars you've got rebellions you've got Mm -hmm. literal battlefields all over this nation and weird international relationships with everybody around them all who want a piece of china because it's just this huge tract of land yeah (laughs) No Monty Python here. Oh no, I Huge missed it. I missed tracks it. Tracks of land. I forgot about that. Oh come on, guys. I'm I sorry. Say, I missed it. This is why power shouldn't be handed down. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. So he's like, just find the money. We we'll we'll figure it out. And then he checks on this every single month. All the while, he's still going to brothels. He's you know, he's still living. got his little appetite for sexual mischief there. And his uncles beg him, they beg him to abandon this costly project of rebuilding because the country is so broke. Um, But he's resolute in his goals, and in short order, he strips them of their princely titles and basically fired everyone who suggests stopping the project. Oh, he sucks. Well, he learned that from his mom. Did he? If there was somebody that was in her way. Yeah. She did. Either off goes their head or off goes their title. Okay. Like, so that's how he solved his problem. So problems. theoretically, if you're going to rule a country like that, that's how you rule the country. But he learned from a person who was very smart in the way that she made those decisions. And he's just like, no, you can't tell me no. So I'm going to fire you. And guess what? You're not Prince anymore. Nee, 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 nee. Yeah, that's Joffrey. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> he is the emperor and dems the rules. Cusco. Don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> That's his name. It's Cusco. I didn't ask to be here. Is they he put me in what? charge, so they do what I fucking said. His yep. groove. They did. They were trying to throw off his, his groove. His butt fucking groove. Exactly. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolute oh my God. masterpiece. Yeah. Absolute masterpiece yeah, of the movie. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It is. And it's so apt here. Did right. somebody turn him into a llama? Poison for Cusco. Cusco's He's supposed poison. to be dead! <laughs> the poison specially made for Cusco. Cusco's poison, yeah. That poison? That poison. That poison. Yes, that poison. Yes, Crunk! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Cusco, a God. well-written character with heart. So That's funny. Cool Everyone was well-developed. Like, even the little kids yeah. that had no... Even the old men playing chess, like yes, so much personality. Yeah, <laughs> and one of the only movies where the mom is alive. Yeah, both parents are alive. Both parents are alive for those kids. Well, Cusco's parents are dead. So. Well, yeah, Cusco's parents are dead. <laughs> Why but you gotta be a downer? We're talking about Why you gotta the be kids. Downer? It's called a theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, heard of it? True. Uh, all right, so Cusco is basically firing everyone. Yeah. Um. Cusco. <laughs> yeah, we're calling him Cusco now. No, we're not calling him Cusco. Okay, sorry. Tongzhu. Yeah, I was I was trying to I was trying to make that segue. Weird segue. You can't just say segue and have it be a segue, but segue, segue. Yeah, you can. So the da- Empress's Dowager were like not having this. Yeah. They were what the fuck are you doing? We we left you alone and this is what you're doing. So they stepped in and they reinstated the titles and the positions. They were like, D- you're not fired. Yeah, please. Still princes. Please come back. Exactly. We need um, you. I'm sorry. He just sucks. And Zushi basically told Tongja, like, hey, if it weren't for your Uncle Gong. Uncle Gong. If it weren't for your Uncle Prince Gong. 
that we literally like would not be the country would uncle not be prince where it was gong. uncle prince gong. i don't mean to laugh but prince yeah. uncle gong how do you say that no, your uncle, uncle prince, prince gong, gong is definitely the best flow but it's like <laughs> has anyone seen the righteous gemstones you i know? love the right uncle, uncle bobby baby, billy uncle baby billy um, uncle baby billy <laughs> uncle you. baby billy i love the righteous gemstones I gotta, uh, i'm re-watching that today uh, Uncle Prince Gong. Uncle Prince Gong. <laughs> so Uncle Prince Gong basically it's a, it's got... a hillbilly Chinese man, that's what that is. <laughs> no, he's fucking royalty. And if it weren't for this guy, the whole nation of China really wouldn't still be alive as it is today and, like, still kind of doing as well as it is. All right, so we're going to put some respect on his yeah, name. Yeah, put some respect on his fucking name. So after, the you know, after all these wars and stuff, he really helped um, Zixi with, like expanding you know international relations that kind of thing like he was very progressive in that arena yeah okay so this is the fall of 1874 and in december tongja emperor fell ill with smallpox all right they poisoned that bitch yeah they poisoned him too (laughs) in january of 1875 he died leaving joshun empress in charge of a nation she had largely in hell she's about to ruin everything well Uh she'd largely largely been exiled from it right basically during her reign have an heir well, in March she died. Oh, she, so, so two months later she. Died. Okay. They poisoned her too. How did she die? All right, so oh, they here's where the bitch. poison comes in. Rumor you. had it this XOXO, is a one of those this gossip is, gong. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those moments where I'm gonna say there's a couple different versions to this story, so we'll go through them. Okay. So there's a rumor has it that she was pregnant, and the timing her for her death was very convenient mm-hmm. because the court announced it as a suicide. Uh. But the court announced it as a suicide because in another tale, so my, both of these might be true. We okay, don't know. this is rumor two. Well, the court announced it as a suicide because I guess the other rumor is that her father had sent her a, like, box. And it was like a lunch box. It, had, it was supposed to have food in it or whatever. And when she okay. opened it up, it was empty. So it was symbolic of, like, now you've got to starve yourself to death. Oh. I, and let's back up for a second. Prince Homeboy died of smallpox. Yeah. This is the 1800s. Yeah. 1874. Yo, they yeah. made a phone call and were like, 1875. They called up Spain and said, "Let me get some of them blankets you gave the natives in the Americas." <laughs> just one. Just, yeah, we just need one. Just one. Was it? Wait, when was the smallpox vaccine? Was it? I don't know. Okay, that might not till later. 19, yeah, not, it wasn't until 1900 was sometime. Okay, okay. So then, yeah, this is like a death sentence. Yes, and I mean, I think that there was a smallpox outbreak at the time. I was about to ask. Was um, it, Something that happened in that the area. The fuck did I just say? Or was it? Okay. All of this was planned. Yeah, obviously. I've seen this movie before. I've seen this. So, movie. but either way, now he's dead, and now she's dead. They mm. don't have heirs. They don't oh. have kids. They've only been married for a couple of years, and he's only been in charge. So, for bitch a number one and two, they're back in charge. They Here we go. Married. Let's do it. Wow. Here we go again. Ah, oh, shit. Bring it back around. Yeah. So, the seat of power, because Tong Zhu did not have any heirs, they went back to the Empress's Dowager, who readily Ooh, took up the mantle. Wee. There it is. But this was specifically against the rules of the court. Well. So, they had to figure out a successor, and it couldn't be anyone in their generation as they were too old. So, they, okay. you know, it was like it had to be somebody that was Tong Zhu's level or one, somebody that was lower than that. Okay. So, right. Let's it, put a five year old in charge. Woo! And then, then the regents they are in charge they, again. That's, I mean, <clears throat> Tongzhu was five when his dad died. I, that's and so saying. many queens but in history they delayed got him power. taking over until he was like 15. Yeah. So now they're just going to go, put him even younger. No, yeah. it's, it's not It's not even that. It's like now they're going to put another figurehead in and raise that one as well. Yeah. The same way they, they did the last one. Right, right. So again, their power Ooh, and influence radically. is still with the emperor. Right. So there is a lot of arguing about who should be the next guy because neither of them had any more kid like any more male heirs and so they kind of had to go into like l- other areas did he have any like bastard children no. and they would never recognize well i have children. no idea okay. that's not recorded well, okay probably not given what we know well, about him. <laughs> no he was with women too yes i, mean, I think really. he was but like it was more in like a you know if something slips in somewhere whatever like oh that's he's just kind of all about again, back again to, speculation back to game of thrones <laughs> this is uh 
homeboy that she was married to, right? He yeah. was in love with his partner, went yep. off on yep. an adventure. Yeah. She was just a, a beard. Figurehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you think it was that. That's exactly what okay, I think it was. Okay, okay. I mean, I can see that. I can Which see is that. why it was only a rumor that she was pregnant. We don't know if she ah. actually was. Like, uh, maybe? I don't know. Mm. It's a good story. It's all about stories. Right. I mean, we're right now. We're telling this story as things as things are rumored to have happened from a couple, from two or three different angles, yeah, that's all yeah. and then even that we're comparing to another. Like literally, just we've got this fucking soap opera of an HBO show yeah. that is very along the same lines, and that one is acclaimed for being just so addictive to watch. Yeah, all right, Crazy Rich Asians. Whoever yeah. put that movie together, this is your new project. No. <laughs> I'd Actually, just, that would that be, would be really, really funny. funny. That's what I'm saying. Ali Wong put that together, and she's I love she's Ali Wong. having issues right now. But what? Have you watched Beef yet? No. I have not yet, but I know I should. Yeah, yeah I know, and I love him too. So basically, after they argued a lot, they chose Zushi's nephew Zay Tian. I'm I probably said that wrong, so. Sorry. You mean you don't speak Chinese? Zay Tian was named as the next emperor, and his emperor name was Guangzhou. So he was I a like four. Guangzhou was a four-year-old boy from uh, Prince Chen. Damn, and... I was so close. Ah! What? I said five, and he's four. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I was just kidding too. That's so crazy to think a four-year-old. So like, man, you're gonna be king someday. Just that's fucking shape up. <laughs> shape up. So Guangzhou What's was the son of Zushi's sister, and no more fucking nap time for you, dude. Emperor Zhan Feng's brother, Prince Chen. Okay. So one of the other princes that was like kind of working with her and then kind of went through the funeral. So it's the old and... emperor's biological nephew. The old emperor's biological nephew. Okay. It's it's literally his cousin. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's okay. the it's it's Tongja's cousin. All right. First cousin. Okay. I'm following now. It took some cousin minute. zero times removed because yeah, both of them are siblings. I was gonna say it's I can't tell. Weird. I was thinking but, should they be removed or not? But but it's also I mean that's another example of like you're looking at these families that are coming together and it's a lot of matchmaking of like yeah. important royals aligning in ways that means that my name my family name will be known with with this that's every yeah. monarchy in the history of the exactly world. It's, so it's it's, a name it's just very dropping political matchmaking yeah. So they choose this four-year-old kid, um, and he was forever after separated from his family. He was to call Cien, yeah. the empress mother, and Zushi was to be called the dear father. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you kind of further establish this. We're your new parents. Really? This is mommy. I'm daddy. Forget yeah. your old parents. They're dead to you. <laughs> Pretty much. They well, have to, like, de-brainwash him, essentially, well, in their mind. Well, no, it's not that. It's like, th these women have essentially been in charge for a very long time, and so, and this this kid is not old enough to, like, know any of the politics. Uh, yeah. And so he... But because he's, he's in charge, they're still in charge. Yes. Right. So they move him into the palace, and they're his parents, but here's the... So, on the one hand, it is a very, like, big honor, publicly. What a great honor for your son to be chosen yeah, it's a fucking show. as... The next emperor, we're gonna take him in, we're gonna take care of him, he's gonna be the next guy. It's a great yeah. reason for a parade. Privately, this is basically ensuring that Prince Chun never gets a say in government ever again. Yeah, you've I'm separating you from this life, you're separated from your son, you don't have contact, and you don't have a voice anymore. Yeah, and basically, kind of silencing him forever, get kind of pushing him out of uh, political power, as it were, by also what taking the son. Yeah, what a double fuck you. Yeah, because yeah. no matter what you do, your legacy is through him. Well, and I'm taking your kid, and you're in social exile. Exactly. Yeah. Well, but and publicly, like it's a fantastic honor. So he's basically like he sees all of this insult, but he's supposed to act like it's this big favor. Did you guys oh. see? Uh, did you watch Better Call Saul? Uh, the first I couple seasons. It's like that. when his brother leaves the law firm, they get into like a huge argument, him, the partners of the big law firm that he runs. Yeah. And he's like, you know what, just go and we'll tell everybody. Or he, he's like, I'm, he's like, everybody have an announcement. He's like, this is his last day, he's retiring and nobody, and they're like, instead of like telling everybody that they fought and he was like, get the fuck out. He was like, all right, everybody clap for this motherfucker as he leaves. Yeah. Oh. And he's like, oh, like, you know, really sad walking mm -hmm. down the stairs. 
That's rough. It's a real one of those situations. Yeah. It's almost like if you turn it down, it's worse. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, well, yeah. why would you turn down such an honor position, like an yeah. honored position? Correct. And to bring any kind of attention to a scandal like but that also, brings dishonor. But also, do you dishonor. really think he was given a choice to turn it down? There, there was no, no. hey, no. do you want it? No, we're just, hey, this is what's happening. We're going right. to no. take your child, and he's going to be the but next But if he emperor. made any kind of a issue about it, it would be on him. Don't yeah. make a stank. Right. So the um, Sian and Zushi, they both oversaw the care and tutelage of this little boy. They hired the same tutors um, they as they had before. Legally kidnapped him. That's all. Basically, yeah. Um, so the whole time we've got this self strengthening movement. We've got China that's trying to recover from war. They're still really broke. Um, they've got you know they they build international relations and they have foreign language schools in an effort to grow into international relations with. Britain and France and, and even America at this point. So mm. they couldn't be ignored yeah. in the global market anymore because they're actually expanding. Um, yeah, and then in the 1900s, they started manufacturing everything. Mm. So she still had to listen to the advice of her council, even when they gave her bad advice. Um, in an effort to try and grow the Chinese Navy, she bought a number of warships from Britain. And they were supposed to help with like with the training and actually having large vessels mm -hmm. and in these exercises. But the boats showed up fully crewed and captained by the British. So Zushi oh. sent them back. Taking we're colonizing you again. I wanted like, it unfurnished. It's our boat. We're in charge of it. Right. So, so you can't with. take like our you guys machines. can come and watch us do our training. You can be on the boat while we do this. How far but, removed is this from the Pirate Queen? Um, so that was in like the early 1800s, and this is 1870s. It's only 50. So okay. only like maybe 20, 30 years. Yeah, that's. But really basically, close. everybody that was part of the pirate navy has like either died or passed on or like not been part of that. Um. Yeah. Either they're like a really old captain or whatever, or they've got like a son or a grandson that's right. now in the navy because now it's a family but they're like not the career. Same force they were then. No, not right. after no. that okay, war, okay. and especially yeah. after all of the wars and battles that they were in, sure. their forces had been completely decimated. They yeah. really didn't have that many people anymore, Sheesh. and they were sending all these people from like really small towns to Sounds try like and Nobody serve. taught them how to play Risk. <laughs> uh, anyway, so there were limits to all of this enthusiasm. Um, <laughs> There's limits to my enthusiasm. <laughs> regularly she was trying to make sure that the, all of this growth was sustainable and so some of the yeah. some of the decisions that some of her counselors you know suggested were like mm, this is not going to actually be good for the long term yeah isn't that something you also have to be a fucking economist right <laughs> the mm. empress of the country jesus christ and also in that time she's kind of doing all of this and and publicly she's really st like going and getting all of this shit done but she also then fell ill so she was unable to care for the Guangzhou emperor. She was separated from him and Xi'an, who was like her best friend yeah. at this point. A they were super these close. Years. Right. It's so like Delma and Louise. And yeah. Xi'an now has to deal with all of these affairs of state that had always been handled by Zushi. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when if your loved one gets sick and then you have to like pick up all the stuff that they normally do at home. Right. Um, and it's like this is their they third also emperor. Be away from them. This is their third emperor now. Yes, yes. Do we think their relationship was strictly platonic, or do you think they became like old lesbians together? I think that probably they acted like the old lesbians that we think of, but not in a sexual way. I think like they sisters, had a very good instead. friendship, yeah. and it was very close. I would think of okay. it like more like a sisterhood. Yeah. All right. Not like romantic, but in a way like. It's not like when your aunt brings home her roommate. <laughs> no. I don't All have right. an aunt. No. Uh, it was a cousin in our family. It was uh, my mom's cousin. Oh, mine! It's a yeah. cousin too. Yeah. She's great. Shout out, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> She's really sick. She's away from her family, and then Cien died in oh. 1881. Um, she was absolutely devastated. So yeah. there is a rumor. Uh, I think it's complete bullshit. So there is a rumor that um, Zushi possibly poisoned her, <gasps> but. Their friendship does Seems not unlikely. denote. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that unlikely. can't be. What's the motive? And she, the, I guess there was a certain mourning period, and they passed it by like a lot. And she just mourned her for a long time, refused to play, um, or go to. I guess the the opera. They liked to go to the Chinese opera together, and Aww. so she didn't do that for a long time. And then when. Okay. Kind of the morning period was over. She went and watched it for like ten hours. Go get it, girl. Yeah, she. It was get really, that really, really sad time for her. She was oh, actually missing her friend. Break my know. heart. Right? How long did she live after that? Pardon? How long did she live after that? How long did Zushi live after yeah. that? 
we'll get to it. Okay. But All right. a but long time. Okay. A long time. Really? She went yeah. the distance. Yeah. Like almost another 30 years. Damn. She came from the streets. Stuff. <laughs> She's a tough one. So, um, let's see. We think that it was a stroke that took Sihan. Ah. Um, because, so she was still sick, she took to written communications for, you know, all of her, like, external relationships and, okay. and still having to deal with international relations, that kind of thing. Mm. But basically all of this, like, now they have to pick up the pieces. So Sihan was covering for the political stuff, and now she's gone, and so she is still not healthy, but she's... Yeah back in charge She's here. and now you've got 10 year old Guangzhou emperor who is devastated by the loss of his mother figure yeah and no, having to mother she told him to call him yeah yes um, so and they were very close she had a they had a great relationship so just he's me devastated. dear father can you imagine how confusing that is <laughs> dear father well, so now he's a, never mind. <laughs> so now he's sitting in like state meetings alone. Oh. He doesn't have help of of Zushi. He definitely doesn't have the help of CN. He is alone and having to make all of these decisions for affairs of state. Years old. Yeah, yeah, that makes How sense. How dumb I love are these decisions? Logic. So in 1885, about four years later, after China had lost another war mm -hmm. of the Sino-French, uh, Zushi used... Wait, they participated in another war with a 10-year-old emperor? Uh, this was like, by this, he was between 10 and 14. Still. And this guy, yeah. while, while Tongzhe was very dumb and didn't like to study, mm -hmm. this guy is smart. Good. He's smart and he's he... He's still a child. I know, but like... Yeah. But he's, he's probably still doing really better quickly. than the previous guy. Yeah. And he's like has special tutelage about how to deal with all of these things from private cool. tutors that are paid a lot of money to come and teach him about how to do these things at a young age. So he's got a leg up on the previous one. Yeah, yes. All right. He died. Uh oh. So Zushi, at that point, she reused Prince Gong's involvement with the de defeat of this Sino-French war to downgrade him and other officials, um, <laughs> replacing them with. Prince Chen. You who, told me this was a good idea. <laughs> well, and then Prince Chen, now he's back in the game. So his father, biological? The Yeah, the emperor's biological father, now instead of being exiled, back he's in. He's back in court. He's back in. So the how boy does... can't know you're his father. You're his <laughs> uncle now. You're the new Uncle Chen. I mean, no, they knew that, but like it uh, was it was basically like... For all for emotional all in, For all public purposes. Oh, we brainwashed it out of him. <laughs> yeah. We gotta keep it secret. We scrubbed it clean. He's still come back here. here. <laughs> So, That's basically, she thought twist. that Prince Chen would be more malleable than okay. Prince Gong. Like, he had his own opinions, and they kind of butted heads, so she was like, eh, she Prince Chen will probably okay. kind of sort of yes is holding his son hostage. So, a little bit. we got a little leverage. There. A little bit. A little bit. Um, let's see. This is a very confusing spot, so let's see. Uh. <laughs> In 18, by 1886, Guangzhou started attending field plowing ceremonies while he was officially old enough, um, or and when he was officially old enough to rule, he was in it was in 1887. Um, Zushi was not really ready to give up the mantle quite yeah. yet, oh, so wow. she came up with a new title for herself that oh, would no. still serve as an advisor to the emperor once he took office. So basically, okay. she's not going to be completely out of retirement. She is. Some real she's a consultant. Shit. Yes. Yeah. This is this is fully Game of Thrones in China. It's exactly. <laughs> it really is. So the kid finally took office and married, and for the most part, Zushi retired. Like, I mean, he actually made Second good decisions, and she goes to live in the Summer Palace, and she retires. God. There is... <laughs> over, you know, over a course of a few years, she was only really counseled, like, a couple times about yeah. certain different things. Um, I guess he spent more of his time with one of his consorts than his actual empress. Um, so in 1894, she just downgrades two of the consorts for political reasons, mm -hmm. but it was basically so she could ensure that Guangzhou would be like with the empress. And yeah. Not anyway, you got a duty to fuck. Yeah. This person, this person has to at least get one male heir out of you. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I know. Dairy farm. Yeah, it's great. It does not sound great. So China was back to fighting with people for one reason or another, and in 1894, the first Sino-Japanese war broke out, and it started because Beijing had been recently wavering in their support of Korea. So Korea was a... <sighs> There's one thing I know, is that there is a hierarchy of Asian so, cultures. So, oh my god. Okay, yeah. so, a vassal state, that's what it's called. So okay. So there's 
un- connected to China, there's a number of things called vassal states, and they were things that, like, at the time, China was kind of responsible for, they owned, but, like, they mostly kept out of it. So, like... They governed themselves. They governed themselves. They were this one little area, and basically they had the protection of the Chinese without having to, you know, and they had to, you know, send them, like, announcements when they got married and and have, like, the approval of the Chinese, you know, people so that they could do all of these things. Like, it was very much a publicity figurehead pompous ass all that shit like the like, idea of the commonwealth for yes the UK. literally just you have to yeah have these made up titles for this royalty and you have to send this for permission to marry yeah to these other people anyway weird fucking crazy so they've been wavering in their support of korea and at the time japan had been really like adopting these new updated militaristic policies mm-hmm. they had really advanced in like they were very socially progressive as well and so they were that really appealed to the people of korea this is very confusing (laughs) if you want a much much more detailed um explanation of what's going on at this point in history please go listen to i want to say it's either part two or the very beginning of part three of my chinese revolution episodes with paul hess uh, because he does a much better job of explaining this than I do. Basically, it's a lot of moving parts. Tensions are high, and let's, uh, let's tensions leave it are there. high. Yeah. Yeah, the turn of the the turn of the twentieth century is really something. Right. So Japan basically took full advantage of this like wavering support, and they attacked China. And for a year, Japan had success after success after success in battle, and they successfully annexed Taiwan from China. Um, and that was just a fucking brutal blow because Taiwan, um, was, ha- had a lot to do with like the hospitality. It was a lot of their revenue every like year. Like tourism and stuff? I, I guess so. People like, that were doing commerce there, like a lot of ports okay. and stuff. That, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Trade, etc. Right. So Zashi was called on many times to help arbitrate policy making, uh, to get, all of these things to kind of calm down and try and get out of battle. She starts getting memos actually sent to her office so she can start helping our, like uh, make policies and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh! News bulletin! <laughs> Elsewhere in East Asia. The first Sino-Japanese war is happening. Korea had been a tributary state of China under the Qing dynasty, but after their emperor died without a male heir to the throne, all manner of drama happened within the succession line. Power vacuum. Fantastic. Japan had just been unshunned from international trade restrictions like 20 years earlier. Mm. They'd been isolated for 250 plus years and were finally given the opportunity to trade. Wow. 250 years, 250 years. I don't think it was with everyone, but there were certain things that they were very, like, limited. Certain uh, countries that they were restricted from trading with for a long time. What did they do? So Korea has been modernizing and getting into relations with the U.S. this whole time, and they were willing to trade with Japan, and in the 1880s, where Korea was trying to continue moving forward in modernization, China was trying to kind of stabilize. They were still working on catching up. Right. Um, And since technically the peninsula belonged to China, the reassertion of ownership had to be accepted, but the King Gojong of Korea was left without the ability to appoint diplomats without Chinese approval. So they... Korea broke out into two sides. So there was one that was with fine with the piece, the pace of like the reform in China, yeah. the, the stabilization, and then there was this other that really wanted to emulate Japan. They really wanted to catch up with like this enlightened progressive nation. Huh. Right. So when Japan finally decided to attack, they had developed a British style naval fleet, and their powers were truly something to behold. When it happened, the Qing Dynasty and Guangzhou Emperor were just not prepared for it, mm-hmm. um, nor were they able to compensate in other areas. So they got their asses whooped Ouch. real hard. They got so spanked. With a paddle. Yes. <clears throat> I don't know why I brought that up. I'm just going to move it's on. It's Freudian. It's fine. <laughs> we, don't, we don't shame. We don't kink shame here. That's right. You know exactly why you brought it up. It doesn't have to apologize <laughs> We don't need it. It's good. <laughs> Oh, ours had hearts around it. So I was like, ah! <laughs> it's a love paddle. They call it the birthday paddle. You want to smack on your ass in the shape of a heart? No, two hearts. Oh. Nice. One for each cheek? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they had these points. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it was fun. So they China's been defeated again in battle, and mm. Guangzhou Emperor... It, it, this is humiliating. Yeah, him. how many in a row now? Right. So he starts to think that maybe they should be more reform-minded. Guess he's not good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
So they should be more reform-minded, and there should be this huge sweeping declaration that aimed to change laws, politics, and society itself. Fucking nerd. It was quite the decree, and he made it without the advisement of his ministry. Oh. Just, oh. He just came, he was like, he all right, the, we're doing this. He had the ideas already in mind. No, he just came up with it and was like, all right, this will work. I'm the I'm going to make an announcement. Oh, I'm the shit. emperor. I'm going to make an announcement, basically. That's... Uh-huh. So Tired of losing. It's called the 100 Days Reform, and Zushi kind of tried to kill it before it got started. 100 Days? The 100 Days Reform. Basically, the whole every nation. day for 100 days, they were going to do these things that would help strengthen their country. It was in the middle of this self-strengthening movement. Trying, trying to create to... routine and worker bees. He reads one self-help book. <laughs> You saw the Dalai Lama one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So she she steps in, she kills it before it gets started. And further than that, in 1898, she resumes her role as regent. Fuck. She comes out of retirement again. Tom Brady, I told you. Come back. Hey, <laughs> I'm on the Buccaneers hey. now. Hey. <laughs> So she resumes her role as regent and her life in court and basically has Guangzhou Emperor banished to this tiny island oh, in the river that surrounds the Forbidden City. And it's only accessible through one controlled causeway. And it's no one like, ever heard from him again. There is a fucking wall around the Forbidden City and then there's a moat around the Forbidden City. And in that moat, there's like a couple bridges. And in one bridge that gets opened and closed, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. I looked at a bunch of pictures. There's this one thing that gets open and closed. There's a tiny little island right there. That's where he lived. Wow. Yep. Put that bitch on Alcatraz. Yeah, Basically, that is Alcatraz. Forbidden City Alcatraz. Oh, my God. What's so, uh, yeah, Azkaban? We, yeah, yeah it's like Azkaban. Yeah. What, what, when was this built? How long have the Forbidden City been oh, there? Fuck, I don't know. Okay. What is... Oh, I wonder what, the, what Azkaban, if there's like a Chinese translation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Google will know. I'm just going to text myself a reminder so I don't forget to look it up later. <laughs> okay, cool. But that's insane. So she's just like, this guy, I'm just going to step in and say he's no longer in power. <clears throat> we were wrong. Yeah. I should be back Well, in power. she doesn't really say that, but no, basically but the, her she actions like, do. Yeah, the, the actions that she takes, she kind of swoops in and does all of these things that publicly they're like, oh, it's business as usual. We're just moving some things around. But like internally, everyone's scrambling. Oh, shit. Basically, she's coming in and going, all right, fuck all this. Like you're out. We got to, we got to make better decisions here. Yeah. This is, this was a really bad. And I honestly, I think it's out of more like embarrassment for the country. And like, she could sure. kind of see the writing on the wall that like the country wasn't going to keep going that much longer. Yeah. They're in kind of their dying breaths of, of this Qing dynasty, going which has been going on. The glory. Yeah. Well, and I mean, they've been, this is hundreds of years of one dynasty, of one specific family. Yeah. And it's all dying right, right now right in, in front, front of, of me. Eyes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's time to just let it go. Legacy Peaceful is Peaceful transfer of power. <laughs> so she she annexes him, but that he, but it didn't actually go super well because That's how they, they, he had they already been... like he's a fucking good of, or service? Jesus. Well, so he'd already been part of negotiations between Britain, Japan, and China. Banished! And things were really kind of going well. Banished. So she she kind of brings him back. Again, it's like the... it's it, I'm going to punch you in the face, and then I'm going to like wipe off, wipe the blood. It's oh, are you okay? Who did this to you? Yes, literally that. She does this... Go to therapy. S- she does this in so many instances, and a lot of it is political. So this is another, like, okay, if I really want to do this, like, I got to bring him back, and because okay. he is important as a figurehead in these negotiations, I can right. still sit there and Classic be- narcissistic fucking... She's been in power three times. Method. No, I just mean, like, it's textbook. <laughs> yeah, she she wrote it. Who do you think the books are about? She's pretty much wrote it. Yeah, yeah this is that ancient Chinese wisdom. Mm. Well, and it makes a lot more sense when you think about it in that kind of regard, because then you've also got like the wives that they actually want to spend time with, that they're actually trying to devote their lives to, and you're like, no, pay uh, uh, attention, look me, here, me, 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 yeah, back here, yeah. You've got to do this. You've got to be Grody. here about this, and I am your. I am the most important woman in your life. Yeah. Dear Damn father. It, that's got it. Yeah, dear father. Dear father. <laughs> I'm the most important and man. I know it's like a look figure at me. Look at me. Ideas. I'm your mother yeah. and father now. The <laughs> most important man. Woman in your I'm life mom and dad now. Father. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Being transformed That's got to cool. be so interesting in the mind of like how it affects these emperors. It does. I mean, it's got to fuck with your head. Right. So it's like, of course, they're not going to want to be in power because it's being associated with this domineering figurehead, though. Yes. And they don't know any other way yeah. of it being done. So they're like, do I really want to continue on in this vein? Do I have to rule like this? These are mommy daddy issues. <laughs> So she tried at that point. So she's she's trying to figure out how to walk back Guangzhou's dethroning in a way that still looks okay for her. So she tries mm. to install one of the fourteen, another cousin, uh, who's fourteen at the time, as a prince regent for the moment. But the kind of the way that the talks were going and the way that these relationships we got a cousin for that. <laughs> like, but it basically kind of turned into like we got we yeah. need Prince Gu- Guangzhou or nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he came back as an official, okay. um, but the damage to his reputation had already been finished by that point. Well, and so yeah. no one really ever saw him as an authority figure ever again. So how he was can you unbanished, take him seriously? but he was like not, he was a joke. Now. How can you, yeah. How can yeah. you take him seriously after the hundred After days? mommy dethroned him yeah, and mom, then rethroned him. Like, yeah. Mom is really the one in power. Shut up, He's dick. nothing. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's going to listen to you ever again. No. <laughs> after mommy, daddy dethroned him. Yeah. 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 Mr. All right. Mr. Mom. Mr. Mr. Mom. Mr. <laughs> mom. So in 1900, a rebellion uh, broke out in northern China, and it's called the Boxer Rebellion. Again, I cannot stress this enough. This sounds familiar. I am not going to have a good time explaining this. So again, please don't listen to just this one. Go to my other one because they again do a much better job of explaining what the hell's going on over there. The time a bunch of boxers like rose (laughs) up and dethroned it. It was a big match. Talking about. (laughs) (laughs) I was just about to ask: Was dogs or people? So there. So. Zushi at this point is trying to throw her support behind nationalist soldiers, and there she's declaring kind of war on the Western powers. And technically, the armies could have done like a lot better than they did against this rebellion. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's kind of a rumor that, like, again, a lot of this is there's there's a rumor here, there's a rumor there. There's three different versions of this story. Um, at at different points, all of these characters, other than like Zushi herself and Cien, are kind of on the take they're getting paid for something mm-hmm. um for information they, they, little whispers oh, um spiders so they think Spirits. that somebody that was in charge of that really just kind of on purpose made some bad calls so again they're getting their butts kicked um ouch they took the entire city of beijing and it caused Zushi once more to flee with her entire family. Fuck. And it was 18 months before they were able to actually return. And it was just largely in shame because they what lost the, the war and the treaties. I think this was the second part of this. The second. No, Boxer Rebellion. That's years later. I I want to say it was the Japanese again. Mm. But please, again, don't listen Double to check me. That other... This has been a few weeks and my brain broke so much trying Lots. to research this episode. Yeah, there's a lot of information and names. Chinese and... history is literally just one long Game of Thrones soap opera fucking oh, thing. Shit. It's amazingly complicated. And because it's so much land, there's so many things that can be going on. At I was going to say, yeah, it's yeah. way too we all much affect each other. to be held peacefully. There's always got to be something going on with all of that right. border territory. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of where we're really seeing the collapse of the Qing Dynasty. So okay. she's running... A broken, dying country. They're still broke as fuck. Um, and people just won't give them a break. No, they keep um, kicking them while they're down. Yeah, keep, they keep kicking them while they're down. And the in the Boxer Treaty, she basically gives up so much um, just, just to be able to ensure that they have peace in China for a little while. So there was a lot of land that was given up. Um, there was a certain number of, like... There was, I think there was a thing going on with the French where they were trying to ensure that there would be peace, and then they tried to, like, backtrack and make them pay, mm. and that didn't really work out, so I'm... Never I'm, does. Mm-hmm. Never does. Um, but she was able to kind of hold them to the fire, hold their feet to the fire and, you know, get that, like, she wouldn't actually we owe them a lot pay. of money. Oh, she owed. I thought she was getting money from them. No, she would never, she ah. wouldn't have to pay. It was like a whole thing. Gotcha. Again, Paul does a much better job of explaining this than I do. Um, well, things were complicated. Here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should. He's actually, he's super good at this. And we've talked about maybe doing another episode oh, together, okay. um, on like on another Chinese woman, maybe in the 20th century. Heck so, yeah. yeah. Um, so when she returned to the forbidden city, she started adopting kind of a lot of modernization reforms. She was like, if you can't beat him, join him. Okay. Um, she's modeling a lot of this off Japan. 
and she kind of got all these gears moving to like have China catch up <laughs> with yeah. everyone else. Ooh, what's she China's even catch up like? Oh, <sighs> no, Grom. we're not doing that. <laughs> Just straight we're no. Clip that. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and cut. We are not doing that. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> You're fine. So <clears throat> we forgive, <laughs> but we never forget. For elephants. <gasps> I love elephants. Elephants on parade. One of the things that she did that really helped with modernization also was like she actually got like family portraits taken of the royal family. Ah. So there are pictures of her. Which wow. Is cool. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah. Ew, yeah, that is the uh the photos we have for the thumbnail. That's yep. an actual photograph. Yep. It is a huge step into the modern world in a world that had in a country that had just been all about Yeah. You know, they they'd been very Tradition. slow to modernize. Yeah, they're yes, very, they were very traditional. traditional. Um, so on the 14th of November, 1908, Guangzhou Emperor died of arsenic poisoning. Well, there you go. There it is. There it is. Now it's proven. There it is. Show well, hold on. It. During this time, though, arsenic was in a lot of things in, like, Victorian London and England and all of that. So they probably had some leftover stuff with arsenic in it. When his remains were tested a full century later. A full century later? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> full century later. Well, they the, didn't really have the testing a at the full time. Full century like, I later. Know, what the fuck are you getting out of a bag of bones that's 100 years old? They get DNA now out of like I thousand million years old. I, I'm God. not sure how long. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> when his remains were tested a full century later, the levels of arsenic that remained in them were over 2,000 times that ah! of normal people. So that was definitely not from the environment. Absolutely that was straight up poison. Poison. That's not a mistake. And I, a I, lethal dose. I don't know how much that fades over time. I tried to Google it, but if I got any more specific than like how long does it take arsenic to degrade in human remains, I just I don't. Yeah, I don't know anything about. I'll get calls. Stuff. It'll be yeah, a whole no, thing. Yeah, no, you're already on a list. I'm on a list for sure. Yeah. Um. So, Guangzhou died on the 14th, and Zushi died <sighs> on the 15th. Oh my God! A day Somebody later. killed them both. <gasps> Who wanted them dead? Or is this a murder suicide sort of situation? Okay. So there are a few different options. Theory, and we can go through them. Theories, theories, murder theories. Suey. Mur right. Murder suey. Murder suey. Theory is time. So, the first, we've got um, Zushi knew she was dying. She was sick. She was old. It's 1908. This it's is probably painful. She's been alone for a long time. She's kind of like, she's tired and she finally signed off on a little peace and quiet for her fucking Go country. out on like, a high oh note. Oh my God. I'm so tired of all of this. And so she's going out of power, okay. but she realizes that if she dies, uh, Guangzhou is going to be the one in charge. Ah, shit. And she's like, oh, I right, can't do um, that. I can't do that. I can't deal with that. This bitch literally said, I'm about to die tomorrow. So kill him today. So, yeah. yeah. Make sure he's so, not left with power at any point yes. in time. So the rumor is that she oh. poisoned him or had him poisoned and appointed the next emperor within the day oh. so that she would know that, like, Somebody... she, at the at her very last moment, she was having, like, an effect on the This is literally future. Game of Thrones. It is. It's Atlanta. To, it's not Atlanta. And it is a very Atlanta incredibly, Trump. like, it's a very, very calculated Game of Thrones. So, Guangzhou's first wife, his, his bitch number one, was actually a very kind person. She was kind of malleable. She was a little more brainless, but like willing to uh -huh. kind of do what was best for the country. Yeah, Got she was it. for the cause. She had the her heart in the her right place. Her heart was in the right place, and she was a little more malleable. She would listen. Well, you said first wife. Did you say heart in the right place. I, I mean, she bitch motivated. number one. Oh, bitch number one is what you meant. I thought you meant like he got she remarried to no, another no, no. head bitch. She's the wife number one. Okay, she's, she's wife a, she's position number one. Yes. Top bitch. Um, Bottom bitch. Her name was Long Yu. No, no, no. I think... I'm thinking, like, you remember the episode of South Park? I know exactly Butters? what you're talking okay, about. Okay, cool. But they're not pimps and hoes. They're I know, but I'm just saying, in, in if you were going to translate it into those terms, yeah, then it would be bottom vernacular, bitch. Yeah, bitch number one is the bottom bitch. I know it's confusing. Old people try to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's one theory, is okay. that she knows that he's about to die. She puts in a... Um, she puts in a strategic little placeholder emperor child there hmm. and she knows that Long Yu is going to care for him but she also knows that the ch country is dying so that when it came time 
Long Yu would actually be able to listen to kind of the voices of those around her that were smarter than she was and be able to give her the best information. Like Jane Grey in the Tudor dynasty in England. That's what they did for anybody who likes that particular area of history. Did you say dynasty? I didn't say dynasty. Did I, did I say dynasty? I think you might have. The two, well, it's a Tudor. You're watching too many English reign. shows. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Dynasty. <laughs> Dynasty. Um, but no, like, he basically was Henry VIII's son. The sole heir that Henry VIII right. had put forward, but he died so young, and he was afraid of the next person in line, which was mm-hmm. Queen Mary I, who, as we all know, was rumored as Bloody Mary. Right, right, right. But he I appointed Jane Grey. We're doing Bloody Mary at some point. We got it. Soon. We We're got doing, it. She's one of my favorite Bloody tragic female figures. <laughs> I like... I'm embarrassed to say I really liked her as a kid, but as I've gotten older, I'm like, oh, fuck. No, I can't Lady was a little bit fucked. I'm really excited about Bloody Mary, and um, we've also got, we're going to be doing Elizabeth Bathory soon. (gasps) I would say put Jane Grey in there somewhere, because she was a queen for, like, nine days. Okay. And (laughs) she'll make it in, for sure. Let's do a segment of, like, short-lived leadership. Oh, we definitely could. Yes. That'd be fun. Like, William Henry Harrison was president for 59 days. Exactly. All the women that that were just super... Exactly. We'll go with the long you, because she is anyway all right and we'll but get it's, to I'm, I'm, I, so I know what's going on here is that you. she was just like i cannot leave this person in power i've got to do whatever right. i can this bitch. but uh-uh. she she did the, she did it the smart way she killed them first yeah so she had him poisoned and then just she barely, she like, like. It's, well, it sounds like she already had her choice for the next emperor too made up because she was able within 24 hours she was dead too so basically she had her mind made up and she was able to kind of go all right He's dead. Now this is the new guy. And sh- he knew that she knew that Prince, like Empress Dowager Long Yu would be in tr- basically now regent, tiny Emperor's regent. Exactly. Yeah. She would be the new Zushi in that yeah, position. Yeah. She'll right. do it right. She'll do it right. So, and, and, okay, this was another part of it was that at the time, the, um, I can't remember if it was for this kid or if it was for. If, or if it was for Guangzhou, but one of them, it was like they didn't actually pretend that it was a kid from that relationship. Uh-huh. They kind of made it known that it was like this is a familial position, not a yeah, not an not heir. a biolog- yeah, yeah, not a biological blood you relation. Know what this. Yeah, yeah. Air. air comes out of me. Air. <laughs> I just picture like a raven or like a carrier pigeon with a note strapped to its leg. Like, <gasps> no, the owl the from summer. Harry Potter. Yeah, he gets whatever. a little note. Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever the Chinese messenger bird is, I don't care. Who's, but it who's just it landing. <laughs> it just landing at the summer house. And a guard, like, opening the letter <gasps> and being like, my lady, it's done. And she's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> done. Whoa, I can Whee! go. Yeah, right. She's holding on for the official confirmation. That's conference. what I'm saying. She's that's waiting what, for the confirmation like. number. That's one story. Oh, shit. There is another story. Fuck. All right. So, if we remember back to part one, we're going through these wars in, like, the 1860s, 1870s. And you've got this guy named Yuan Shikai is this guy. So okay. he he has a eunuch come through. He was like one of the commanders in our earlier episode. Mm-hmm. And then so the rumor is that he has a eunuch, one of the many eunuchs that are around the palace. So what are poison? Quick Guangzhou, question about Guang, and then I was just gonna years say, one later, of Guang's one of Guang's eunuchs poisoned him. One of Guang's of a bitch. and then <laughs> and then years later, you. this guy kills the eunuch. Aha. Okay. To keep it quiet. Yeah, keep yeah, it quiet. Yeah, yeah. No we gotta loose get rid- ends. Exactly. Right. So you can like me choose which one you want to do. Um, but basically, what's like that's the what Chinese happened. mafia? I know the Japanese mafia is like the yakuza, but what's the Chinese equivalent? I have no fucking clue. That's what that is. Yeah, I was actually honestly getting mafia vibes when we were talking <laughs> about. No them picking an emperor and yeah. pulling it from the family what do you and they're kind of like it's part of it's, it's, it's a medieval uh, it's a mafia, 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 mafia I know and that's it's why a, we love them one. medieval mafia not medieval in real mafia. life but medieval. in stories they really make things interesting all right so her death was fairly peaceful Good she got her. all of her little ducks in a row before she died um but then her afterlife was not uh oh um her body was entombed in the Qing family mausoleum um her incredibly complex tomb was ordered completely redone back in 1895 so she's like kind of this is after the japanese war okay and she's like i the whole thing for me needs to be redone so last minute minute. 
So she was in there until 1928 when a warlord looted her tomb. Fuck yeah. Split open the coffin, stole oh all of her funerary jewels of and course. a giant pearl from out of her mouth. <gasps> well, don't bury people with shit. So the um You can't the, take it with you. I guess folks. the pearl But if it's in her mouth, leave it alone. So the pearl had been you placed really think they care? I mean, if I were a grave robber, maybe I would. As an archaeologist, I gotta say, like most m- most of our the stuff that we see, like in history, it's museums, grave robbing. It's absolutely grave robbing. It absolutely is. I worked at um <laughs> like the largest collection, like three hundred thousand objects, like the largest Shit. collection of Western stuff, and um, like just stuff. Uh, yeah, I can't think Artifacts? of the word right now. I'm a little. I'm a little confused. Words, okay. not so much. Okay. But it was, yeah, it was like anthropological shit. Jewelry, clothing, yeah. headdresses, you know, all this shit. Oh, I love um, that. Taken from somebody at some point and yeah. then found by the right it's people. It's literally called the Gilcrease Museum, and it's because this guy named Thomas Gilcrease in the 20s went and raided, a, like, went and literally found a bunch of Indian graves, Native mm. American graves, sorry, and um, yeah. raided them yeah. and yeah. just yeah. stole all of it. What? I said, it depends on who you ask. Yeah, whatever. True. I mean, I guess in my mind, don't take her stuff because in their culture, if I'm yeah. remembering correctly, mm-hmm. these were for their yeah. afterlife to have. That's why you get them. That's, that's why, why you get, get a buried tomb. with them. Yeah, yeah, that's what a tomb is for. I think it's dumb. It is. I can see your point. Can't take it with you. <laughs> but I would have left the pearl. Listen. <laughs> well, so the pearl stuff. had been it had been placed in her mouth for like preservation. I guess traditionally it was really. It was a, Culture. It was a Interesting. traditional like it, thing for preservation it, of the body. The pearl itself was. I have no idea if it I mean, actually works. Pearls are organic materials. They are. Pearl. They are. There's pure, not calcium, is it? No. So the warlord. The warlord's name was Sun Dianying, and he basically said that it was revenge for his ancestor back oh. in 1638. Hilarious. Two hundred years before she was born. Some guy I never met. What did what happened to him and how is she responsible? Right. I don't know what she is. Deal with it. So her her grandson was able to have the remains reburied, but it took another twenty years for the restoration of her oh, tomb. Oh, ouch. Quote, one might wish for her sake that her life had been just a burlesque filled with Florentine intrigues and Viennese frivolity, because the truth is melancholy. Under those layers of historical graffiti was a spirited and beautiful young woman trapped in a losing proposition, a figurehead empress who lost three emperors to conspiracy, a frightened matriarch whose reputation was destroyed as she presided over the decline of a bankrupt dynasty. Lost. I don't know. Sounds like she was involved. That's by Sterling Seagrass. Yeah, of Mm. course. So one further tragedy shortly after the death of her remain of the of after shortly after her death, the remaining leader was Guangzhou Emperor's wife, Emperor Empress Dowager Longyu. Right. Okay. And technically, the emperor was named Pu Yi, who took the name Pu Bear, Zhuan Tong, Zhuan Tong, I think. But the power again was with Long Yu because she Sounds was the too new much Zixi. like Long Tom. So oh in 1912, God. basically she stuck her Empress Dowager seal on the abdication decree, a decree that would end a 276-year Qing rulership wow. and a 2,132-year run of Chinese imperial rule. Well, fuck. Yeah. So with one stamp, she ended it all. Well, that's how you get your name in the history books. Yeah. So with one stamp, she ended it all. Um, and that's the she, the she, the she. She outlived a husband, a son, a nephew by a day, and kept the empire going for 40 years past with what it probably should have ended at. That took endurance. That little yeah. Kleinschlingle. <laughs> what? Kleinschlingle? What was that again? Um, for little rascals. Little rascals. Little rascal, that's Kleinschling. what it was. Yes, oh that is... Oh, my God. The she. Oh. This has that been. Is a, oh, this has. <laughs> this has been. been desperate concubines of the Forbidden City. I love it, dude. That is insane. I yep. can't. I, I, I don't want that. I just want to be a concubine and have fun. So that's basically the Cersei Lannister of China. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she is actually. The she Cersei. really did. She did. She actually outlived her children. She outlived the husband. She outlived the successor. She outlived the nephew by a yeah. day. I don't know how much George R. 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 Martin knows about this story. Well, probably not. Probably a lot. It's a lot of parallels. <laughs> well, probably he a could lot. have some knowledge because he Honestly, did from the eastern side. Fantasy is usually written at least like very loosely on yes, stuff that actually happened. Yes, it's historically uh, inf- influenced. And, yeah. yeah. Because real shit is crazier than yes. fake shit. That's why the that phrase you can't make this shit up. This has been... What was it? Uh, well-behaved women, or was it real? 
real concubine. No, desperate, desperate concubines, concubines of the Forbidden City. Desperate concubines yes. of the Forbidden City. XOXO, Part two. Gossip Gong. Gossip Gong. <laughs> It just sounded so the good. Gossip gong. Gossip gong. Uh, I also. Oh my god, we the, could put that in like a little. House can we make was a another gossip thing gong I said for myself. Yeah. We, we could get a little tabletop it, gong it, it and should do be, a little it gong. Be, I'll, I'll draw it up, but I think it should be like a a big gong and then like a person like peeking out from behind it, going like. <laughs> yeah, going like. Shh, don't tell. Uh, with like a naughty face. I kind yeah. of, I kind of want like a more like a cartoonish gong, and then it's got like the little eyes and like the little you know like little hands of its own and just mm-hmm. shh, and it's the gong that's we, the gossip. No los dos. Yeah, that's fair. Come up with a few options. We've come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> no, got S X O X O gossip gong. And then por que no los dos. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. I forgot we were even still doing it. My bad. We got into story time. We did get into story time. Yeah. What do you guys think about like just releasing, you know, the uncut I'm on down. like YouTube or whatever? Sounds cool. Yeah. If yeah. you want to waste a bunch of time. Uh, and get to know some deeply personal stories. <laughs> weird stories from growing up. You know, all the uncut shit that just gets us off on our tangents. If you want to get to know us. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to know who's hosting? Yeah, here we go. I actually forgot to tell us uh, everybody who was hosting today. Oh right, I did. Who so has it been? It has been me, Hannah, Lauren, and B, <laughs> Big B. And just remember, it's not for you, Gary. XOXO gossip, gossip gong. gong. <laughs> All right, check uh, us out on the socials. Oh, We're yeah. on Facebook. We're on. Reddit. Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Reddit. We are on Reddit. Um, we try to be active on all of those, but yeah. I would say, yeah, uh, we're trying to, we're also trying to get a Discord going. I know yes. I've talked about that before, but I think we're getting down to the final elements. So if you want to put in topic suggestions, Discord will be a great way. Yeah. Reddit. Reddit's got some good conversations already going on, yes. which is really nice. So I so definitely want to check that out. We have a community if you want to come and join it. Just yeah, so yeah. Let us know we'll who release all our are some there. badass women in history. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye. I think I'm going to do a sticker that says uh, edutainment.